Case Customer Creations is sponsored by Bits and Bits. Use the code JBates to save 10% off your next router bit or CNC bit purchase at bitsbits.com. Today is one of those days where I don't have a specific project to make, but I've got a lot of things on the list to check off. Uh, we're about to head across the country for a couple days for a wedding, and I need to get some stuff done. So why not record a day of chaos here in the shop? <laughs> Starting with these, gluing these together, these were the offcuts from the uh, bar stool build. So these were the waste for the rabbit, for the rail to seat connection. Uh, anyway, I can't glue these together just as is. I mean, I probably could. It's not really, I mean, it's a it's poplar, so it's not really a great cutting board material. So this is kind of going to be like a, a serving tray, I would imagine. So I, I mean, I guess you could get away with a little bit larger glue lines, but I think we can do better. So. I think I'm going to just run these through the jointer only on both faces that we'll see glue, uh, just to remove a tiny amount. They're pretty parallel as it is, so I'm not worried about getting these out of parallel. All I want to do is get a nice clean surface without getting sniped. So that's why I'm using the jointer and not the planer. It's crazy how just a small tiny amount can add up. I wasn't thinking about how much material I'm actually removing, how thin this is going to be or in width, and uh, I'm left with this group done at seven and seven eighths of an inch in total width, seven and seven eighths of an inch. This one's not done yet. Eight and seven eighths. So I removed a full inch of width by, I don't know, a 30 second of an inch. I haven't calibrated that scale yet for the depth of cut. But, you, you know, you do that twice on each one of these boards for a nice clean glue face, and it adds up. Adds up quick. Those are in clamps. I wrote the time on it so I know how long they've been sitting in clamps. i got to clean all this up so the glue doesn't dry out on my roller. That is a few projects strong now. Uh, so I can switch over to the CNC for a very odd, no, not odd, different CNC project. It is about to storm, so hopefully I, I don't lose power in the middle of this, but I'm, I've already done some testing and I'm ready to go. This is a roll of paper because I'm going to draw with the CNC machine. How cool is that? That is so awesome. Any CNC machine, you can mount some type of marking device to it and use the machine uh, to, to draw. And in this case, I'm using a Sharpie, so my line weight is very thick. I can't get super precise details. Some of these tests show that it's kind of jumbled together, but that's fine. What I'm drawing is a map of the United States. My daughter is homeschooled, and they're talking about uh, states right now and maps and such. So this is going to be a cool little learning aid for her. Uh, last night, I came out here and was tinkering around with it a little bit and made some full-size coloring pages for my daughter. And that's just, that's just really awesome. When I was her age, I would have absolutely loved to have some custom, full-size, you know, massive drawing pages. Technology is awesome. Uh, one of these days, I want to either build or buy a spring-loaded ballpoint pen to do this because if I have a ballpoint pen, my line weight will be very precise and I could do full-size drawings, uh, you know, dimensioned drawings or engineered drawings for my projects. Picture a shaker chest of drawers. And really the only detail is the side of this chest of drawers with a couple raised panels or, panels or something to form the side assemblies. Well, you could draw out, draft out the entire side assembly uh, and then in, print it basically in full one-to-one -one scale. Oh, here comes the rain. Oh, that's a lot of rain. In a full one-to-one -one scale. And then at any time during the build, you could walk over to the wall that this is pinned up against and get any measurement you need. Any measurement you need, because it's right there. That's a lot of lightning and rain and thunder. Uh, anyway, I'm going to be quiet and draw the map of the United States really quick. After I cut this off and reset the paper. One really cool thing about this technique is we're only using the movement motors. So the spindle's not running, the dust collection's not running, the, the spindle's not cutting, so it's not crazy loud. You can actually have a conversation next to this thing while it's doing its job. 
Speaking of doing its job, I don't think my spoil board is entirely flat and or this black cutting platform or mat that I put down underneath the paper, maybe it's got some wrinkles in it as I taped it down. I don't know, but regardless, I'm not getting consistent line, um, line pressure, line weight, uh, because I think I've got a couple low spots primarily with a uneven spoil board. So once this is all done, I will select just the vectors or just the states that need a more defined perimeter. And I will redo, recut, redraw those with a slightly lower depth of cut. Now this, if I do say so myself, is a fun use, fun use of the CNC machine. This is, uh, actually I'm going to reuse these. This is, this is pretty cool. Full size prints basically on demand. And all you have to do is rig up some paper and a marker. Uh, speaking of rig up, uh, there's a couple spots that I just couldn't get to go. And this map is not that accurate at all. Some of these boundary lines don't line up, but it's okay for a four-year-old. So I'm just going to say, yeah, yep, Texas, Oklahoma. Hopefully you are happy with that. A little bit between Arkansas and Missouri. Hopefully I didn't uh, put someone's house in the wrong state there. And that's, that's good enough for government work. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. Next on the list is a divider system, or a storage system rather, for a bunch of these two inch binders and one inch binders and one and a half inch binders. My wife has a lot of these binders and she does not want them stored vertically because something to do with the bottom uh, with these page protectors, it's too heavy, it crushes the bottom. She wants them stored horizontally, but she doesn't want to just stack them because she wants to be able to remove each one independently. So what I'm thinking of is some type of storage solution, which I've yet to make, for sandpaper. You see a lot of these sandpaper storages for sheets of sandpaper, uh, where you basically have a box, two sides with a bunch of slots cut or dados cut in the sides for one eighth of an inch hardboard trays that can be added or removed at any interval necessary to have different size storage solutions for different size binders. Now these, this binder is kind of heavy. Will eighth of an inch hardboard be enough for the shelves? I think so because the majority of the weight will be on the sides where it's less likely to bend. I, I think so anyway. I'm going to try eighth of an inch hardboard first and uh, we'll go from there. But first, my lunch bell just rang so I've got to go eat. Now she said she didn't care what this thing looks like. So I think the MDF scrap that I have, 24 inches, that's kind of high. But I'm going to use that as the side panel height. Just roll with the dimension we've already got. This blade that I have in my table saw is a full kerf blade, meaning it is exactly one eighth of an inch in width. The dados that it will produce, or the kerfs that it will produce, are one eighth of an inch in width, which is perfect for this one eighth of an inch hardboard that I have unallocated and ready to be used. So. Testing this kerf works out just fine. I can go ahead and start making all of my kerf cuts on the side panels. These side panels are 24 inches in length. That's easily divisible by one. So I'll use one inch as my increment. And keeping this up against the fence, I'll cut both ends on both sides and then move the fence by one inch and repeat the process until I meet somewhere in the middle. Real quick side note, my daughter is four years old and I'm for a long time I've been trying to to put her in situations where she can experience how awesome it is to create things. And here lately I've given her her own hot milk glue gun, explained to her how it can burn her and all that and just let her understand it and use it and figure it out. We bought her a big box of popsicle sticks and lately at night she'll be she'll plug it in and uh, on the dining table and just just 
make this big mess of jumbled popsicle sticks. It's nothing fancy, doesn't look like anything. It's what you would call abstract art, but she's doing it with a smile and she's having so much fun. She's learning the, the coordination with her hands, the glue, the whole thing is just really, really beneficial for her. So I've been trying to keep a bunch of random material scraps for her to add to the popsicle sticks. So this was a really big win in many ways because all these off cuts I've kind of kind of made the same rectangular shapes and uh, she'll have fun playing with that. Back to the project. This has uh, 24 minus 1, 23, <laughs> 23 grooves for these dividers to go into. However, uh, this is on its side in a dry assembly. Uh, the first, which would be the bottom and the top groove is so close to the bottom it doesn't even really count. So 21 usable divider slots and I have I think 19 or 20 of these actual slots ready to go, uh, dividers ready to go. So uh, it won't fill up every one of them, but then again, some of the binders are two inches in thickness, so you're not gonna use them for every one of them. But this is gonna be like a multi-purpose thing that I imagine when she gets done using the binders, she'll use it for paper sorting and whatnot. So like I said, this is a dry assembly. I also made a groove along the back, and that's for this back panel, which is this hardboard as well. But I messed up on the dimensions just a little bit. So, um, let's see, Can you, I'll bring you in closer. Remember, this is, this is on its side, but I basically want to highlight the front to back dimension. So I sized this so that way when you put the binder in place, it'll go all the way up against the back panel and the front of it will be flush with the front of the project. I forgot that once you have all these in here, there's really no way to, there's really no way to grab this and pull the binder out. So I need this to be pushed forward a little bit so I can grab it from the sides. That's the easiest way to do it. So if I push this forward about three quarters of an inch, I should be able to grab these on either side. It's gonna look worse <laughs> than what it already is, but hey, she said it doesn't matter what it looks like, it just needs to function. So that's the plan. Push these together, push these forward by three quarters of an inch. How are we gonna accomplish that? Well, with some more scrap MDF, just put it on the back over here as a spacer before the dividers are slid into place. That'll stop the, the uh, binders from going all the way forward and you can use your thumbs or fingers to pull out each, each one from the side. Eh, minor setback, but whatever. This is just a scrap wood project anyway. And like I've already said and want to emphasize, in case she watches this, she said it doesn't matter what it looks like. So that's, uh, that's the story and I'm sticking to it. Now I can go ahead and assemble this, gluing in the back panel and the center divider. The, the two side pieces kind of bow out at the middle. So I'm going to glue in just the center divider and that way I can just squish it together and the divider itself will hold the sides parallel. While the glue cures on the center divider as well as the back panel, I'm going to reinforce the rest of the construction here. I only used brad nails, no glue, and my thinking here is, first off, I don't think glue is necessary. This thing doesn't have to be crazy strong. And I think it would just made everything a little bit more messy. So two more screws or adding two screws to each one of these connections should be just enough. Two of these dividers have holes in them because this is recycled material, but I don't know if I've said it or not. She doesn't care what it looks like. I want to say that again, assuming I've never said it. She doesn't care what it looks like. There's a whole, it doesn't matter. She doesn't care. Doesn't care what it looks like, right? All right, glad we're on the same page here. This is uh, gonna work out pretty well because I think she'll be able to use this for more than just more than just those binders for stacks of paper for whatever and um, it uses up quite a bit of scrap that I had here in the shop so that's pretty cool. I have a prediction to make. This is going to be filled up in just a few minutes. I'm about to take it inside. She'll fill the bottom all up to about right here with with binders as initially intended. She, realize, she will realize that she has extra storage above it. She will put papers in here and everything's great. Yay! Awesome storage solution, organizational solution. Both of us, me and her, love organizational solutions. So everything will be great. About a week from now, she'll say, you know what? That works really, really well, but it's ugly and it smells horrible. I mean, MDF just stinks. I hate the way MDF stinks. She hates the way MDF stinks. You don't have to be like bathing in the dust to smell it. You don't have to put a line up there and you know get a whole bunch in your nose. You just, just look at it the wrong way and you'll smell it. Ugh. MDF dust stinks so bad. I hate it. 
working with it's great. MDF is easy to work with. It just stinks horribly. So at that point, they'll say, of course, I'll make you another one. Probably build it out of like solid poplar or something like that. And then I'll bring this one here in the shop and not do anything and have already built a sandpaper storage solution. All right, this is kind of what the, the idea I had when I first started anyway. So I'll most likely be using this as sandpaper storage. And because these are greater than 10 inches in depth, I think it's like 10 and a half, something like that, 10 and 5 eighths. It will still have enough space to store saw blades as well. So I'll throw it on the wall and, and uh, that'll be fine. But how does it work with, the, with, oh gosh, that's tight. How does it work with binders as initially intended? Well, it works just fine. You can grab the binders from the side to remove them. And actually, there's, because they do stick out from the, from the uh, dividers as well, you can just pinch it to get it out. So it does stick out forward by just a little bit, but that doesn't matter. We can just use it the way she initially intended on using it. Because today is completely random, I want to give a proper thank you and a shout out to a gentleman by the name of Bob Close out of Wisconsin. Uh, I met Bob in 2016, went to his shop. Uh, he showed me his whole shop, his, his lumber stash, his, uh, invited me into his house. We saw his projects that he had completed in his house, as well as a whole basement full of surplus projects that he had completed, ready to go. And uh, just, a, just a phenomenal woodworker and a true gentleman. But Bob, thank you so much for that time in 2016. Here we are seven years later, and my dog passed away recently. Uh, well, I know who to reach out to for decorative or, or beautiful figured hardwoods. So I went to Bob's Instagram page, found a box that he was selling uh, and wanted to buy it from him. He had already sold it, though, by the time uh, I contacted him. And um, rather than trying to sell me another box, he packaged up some material and just sent it to me uh, for me to make an urn for my dog. And that was that's a very, very kind gesture. People in the woodworking community never cease to amaze me. It's just just really, really, really kind people. Uh, so that's that's really, really nice. If you are in the need for some really, really figured hardwoods, curly maple, bird's eye maple, flame birch, curly walnut, just beautiful, beautiful material, uh, check out Bob's Instagram account. Uh, you can contact him. And if he, if he doesn't have if he doesn't have anything posted that you're looking for, contact him and I almost guarantee you he's he's probably got it. Some insane, insane figured materials. Uh, whether you just need a little bit to make like a guitar body or a lot to make a big piece of furniture, uh, he can ship it to you basically anywhere. So check out Bob, uh, see what he has to offer. And uh, once again, thank you very much for the kind gesture, Bob. That was uh, very kind of you to send me this material, and I appreciate it. These have had plenty enough time in clamps. Actually, there's my mark, 1109, it's 443, so five and a half hours in clamps. Plenty long enough with the fast setting glue that I've that I like to use. Uh, rather than running these through the planer and getting some snipe on the front or back of each one of these, which can be eliminated by using a sacrificial board in front and back of your uh, work pieces through the planer, they're pretty darn parallel as is, so I think I'm just gonna take a couple shallow passes at the jointer on both faces to get each wide face flat. I don't necessarily care about parallel, it's just a basic serving board and then we'll kind of shape it and figure out what it's going to be after that. It is 5.48 p.m. and I came into the shop about 10.30 this morning. I think it was about 10.30 this morning. And I took an hour-long lunch break, so 
All things considered, I'll say this was a productive day here in the shop. These are basically like two caveman ping pong paddles. <laughs> the picture cavemen doing that with the rocks. And of course, if they're using rocks because ping pong balls hadn't been invented yet, they're probably going to dent the crap out of these. So Osage Orange would have been a better choice rather than Poplar. But hey, this is a good use of basically trash. If, if you remember from the stools video I just recently published, uh, all these pieces of wood to make this was just the waste material from the rabbits that I that I cut out. So hey, a usable project from trash, I'll, I'll sign up for that. Also, I'm going to a wedding this weekend. I'm most likely going to carve the bottom of these tomorrow. Uh, and one will probably have the last name of the bridal party. And then the second one will probably have something generic and overly used, like leftovers are for quitters, something like that. <laughs> Actually, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. So uh, I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. Uh, mainly wanted to just have a fun, productive day here in the shop recording, and I think I accomplished that. Keyword was productive. I've got a lot of stuff done today. Well, that's it for this video. You guys take care. Have a great day. If you want to stay up to date with everything that I publish, go to my website, jcustomcreations.com slash newsletter and sign up for my email newsletter so you don't miss anything that I publish. And this is where I say, have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.